Welcome back to the Deeper Dive version of 26 Minutes With. We're with uh, Michael D. Butler, and um, this guy is a, uh, I, I, I like this, celebrity kingmaker, global speaker, book publisher, uh, host of Around the World with Michael uh, D., and um, and also, you know, spearheading 1040impact.org, and this is a, an organization, if you're listening to the first part of our show, 26 Minutes With, it's doing uh, work with uh, child trafficking in, uh, in, in, in areas of the world where there are no rules, <laughs> and, um, and the laws uh, are, are not helping either. Um, so I want to talk a bit more about this because like this summer, you, you know, this idea of, of the work you're doing with 1040impact.org, it really came into focus, especially with the uh, fact that um, uh, The Sound of Freedom came out and millions have seen it uh, over, over the summer. And uh, you, you know, you're taking action to raise awareness and, um, you know, find ways to help um, heal uh, the, the victims of, of trafficking. What can our listeners do to take action? Because it's such a far-reaching problem around the world. I mean, you know, the stats and the numbers of, you know, it's the biggest industry and in, probably in the world, especially in America, uh, child sex trafficking. What can our listeners do to take action? Because sometimes when we're faced with such a an enormous problem and challenge, we almost feel like, like there's nothing we can do. What are we going to do? Right. Yeah. So what would you suggest that that our listeners? Well, well, that's a great question, David, because it is so huge. It is so pervasive. What can I do? And a lot of people, until they see a movie like Taken or Sound of Freedom, they don't even realize that it's going on. Uh, Taken first came out in 2008. We were working with a group called Stop Child Trafficking Now back then. We helped them raise millions of dollars. And actually, Ashton Kutcher was the number one um, person on Twitter back then. He retweeted us twice and got us some major PR. And we had an author get a movie deal uh, as a result of that on her book on human trafficking. So what I like to tell people is, A, go watch Sound of Freedom. If you haven't seen it, go see it, share it on your social media, create the awareness. But then the second thing you can do is you can get involved. And the way you get involved is you help Operation Underground uh, Railroad, Tim Ballard's group that the yes. movie's based on. You help an organization like 1040impact.org that's actually rescuing kids and helping them uh, get better, not just rescuing them, but rehabilitating them and preparing them for life. And so there's a lot of groups out there. You do a Google search, um, and there are dozens and dozens of organizations that um, have great ratings with GuideStar and Navigator, and they are approved, and they've been doing it for a long time. Groups like 1040impact.org and other groups like that. So you can get involved. You can do something. If you go to a church or a house of worship, you can look and see what are they doing. Maybe you have a Sunday school class or a men's group or a women's group, or there is a group in your school or church somewhere that is involved in supporting an organization like 1040impact.org with fundraisers, with awareness campaigns of educating and starting a group locally. So share Sound of Freedom, share the movie Taken. The thing I like about Sound of Freedom, because Taken was a little bit you know, Hollywoodized and fictionized and things like that. Whereas Sound of Freedom, uh, they actually went and shot it in Colombia, and it was based on the actual characters that were involved and the actual scenes and locations. And, um, you know, we've published books, David, about kids that were 16, 17 years old that were actually trafficked out of their bedroom. And you say, how does getting trafficked out of your bedroom happen when you're 16 or 17? Right under your parents' nose, even though you're living in a gated community and they never know, it's because of this right here. This I'm holding in my hand is a smartphone and it's the number one tool that groomers use to get vulnerable girls that are teenagers looking for acceptance 
because they target girls that have family problems, that have issues, that are having problems with mom and dad. And guess what? They start chatting with them online, start grooming them. And they'll say something like, you know, I'm a 17 year old boy. And, and they'll chat for maybe a month, maybe two months. They'll chat with this girl really understanding, acting like they understand, acting like they care. It's called grooming. Once they have this emotional connection with the girl, they'll they'll be like, well, your parents really don't understand you. Your parents are really, um, you know, they don't care about you. Uh, I'm at the 7, uh, let's meet at the 7-Eleven next week down the corner from your house. And this is how the abduction happens. And maybe they don't even do a full-on kidnapping. But what they'll do is, like the two girls I'm telling you about, is build a relationship and the, the the person they're chatting with is not 17 he's 25 and uh, you know they'll show up at a local bar and they'll be playing pool and drinking and then uh, it might be a full-on abduction at some point but for a while it's just has sex with the girl the girl feels trapped because she's in love maybe they've been sexting so the girl feels like the the uh, the, uh, the perpetrator can blackmail the girl because if she tries to break up or tell anybody what's going on, he's like, well, I've got pictures of you. And if you don't want your pictures all over the internet and she's terrified that she's going to be exposed and that she's going to be in trouble and she doesn't realize that she's the victim here and there's been a crime perpetrated against her and she's been taken advantage of. That's how it works, David. Do you feel that this can be eradicated in time? And if so, what would need to happen for that to occur, Michael? Other than a miracle. <laughs> well, I mean, we're talking about the human condition of a person's heart. So, mm -hmm. I mean, as long as as long as long mankind is falling, I mean, fallen creature, um, you know, these are the types of things that sinners do. But, um, you know, it, come, it comes down to sin is one thing, but sin against children is a greater thing, right? And so I'm, I'm really in favor of us empowering our parents about protecting our kids, our children against groomers. So parents, why are you giving your 11-year-old an iPhone with internet access without any filters, without any tracking software? Why are you letting groomers chat with your 8, 9, 10, 11-year-old kids through gaming portals and you're, you're not even aware of what's going on. I've got a lot of information up on 1040impact.org about what you can do to protect your children. And most parents don't even realize that it's going on and what's happening. You know, during the pandemic, a lot of parents um, got upset with school boards because they finally realized because of Zoom, what teachers were teaching their children like transgenderism, radical gender identity, and uh, changing genders without parents' permission. All this stuff was being taught at a public school level right in the face of parents. And in spite of the fact that parents didn't want this being taught, it was happening. And so this is happening. Groomers have invaded our cyber world. And parents, we need to get smart. We got to get smart or we're going to lose our kids. And it's not just happening to girls. Boys are disappearing too. Boys are being trafficked as well. And there's uh, there's sexting that's happening with our boys. Our boys are being manipulated into thinking that a 20-year-old girl likes them and wants to see their nude pictures. Well, the whole purpose of them seeing nude pictures of a 16-year-old boy is so they can blackmail that boy and control that boy. And you don't want your children being manipulated, living in fear, and having felonies committed against them like that. It's an it's a it's a tough thing. How do you deal with it? You you wise up as parents and you talk to your kids and you monitor their phones. You got to monitor their phones. If you're not monitoring their phones, parents, you don't love your kids because this is how they're being taken advantage of. This is how they're being trafficked. And then also, you know, speak up against the school system because I agree. You know, they, like, like we didn't learn that as kids in sex ed. We, you know, we learned about, you know, the birds and the bees, but we weren't we weren't exposed to this stuff. And and we have seven-year-old kids. We had seven-year-old, we have books, fully illustrated books for seven-year-old kids on how to have sex with other boys. Yeah. You know, and 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 the, the this ought not be. This is pornographic. It's uh it's an assault on our freedoms and it's assault on our intelligence and parents. 
I, I tell you, my dad used to be the president of the school board. And one reason he ran for school board, he ran for office is because things like this were happening 45 years ago when I was in school. Wow. And so if it was happening 45 years ago in the public school, think of where it is today. You've got to speak up. You've got to show up. You got to let your voice be heard because if the local school board, all politics is local. And if you want to win um, this war against the family that's going to break down and destroy our families, you know, we wonder why we send our kids off to college and they all become socialists and they all turn on us and and despise everything that we've taught them. It's because it was this slow grooming reprogramming from the Disney films from the time they were three, four five years old, that they were strange if they weren't in a relationship. They were strange if they weren't gay. They were strange if they didn't want to change their gender. Our kids are being programmed. And we as parents, a lot of times have used these iPads and these you know, it used to be VHS tapes. We'd show our kids Disney movies because we needed a break. We'd pop in a Disney movie for our kid on VHS. And we had, you know, Peter Pan. We we watched so many times they had scenes memorized. But the point is, we can't let Hollywood babysit our children anymore, especially today, because it's no longer just subliminal in, innuendo like it was 40 years ago. It's blatant in your face, um, messed up stuff right now and we've got to take charge as parents and not feel guilty about protecting our kids we've got to protect our kids i i totally agree and you're right you know the the, the war is won at home and and yeah. then it goes out from there you know if we win the war at home and every home then you know then then we safeguard and and come strong together make strong nations yeah exactly um you know, again, with your 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 work as as a pastor um, in the, in the past, um, how can religious communities help? Do you think um, various churches, synagogues, mosques are they doing enough? Do you think in 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 this war against you know you know child uh, sex trafficking? So um, a lot can be done, and a lot's not being done yet. A lot of churches are. Uh, they have to go by their denomination guidelines and they can't do anything at the local level unless it's mandated from their corporate headquarters or from their, their um, diocese or their, their leadership. Right. But there's a lot that can be done at the grassroots level. There is a lot that can be done at the grassroots level. So we have people that could come in and give a presentation and speak. Uh, we speak at rotary clubs all the time. We speak mm -hmm. at churches. We have presentations. We could do either myself or, or my team could do a virtual meeting with a group. Uh, we did a virtual meeting with a with a, a business leaders out of Toronto, a men's group recently, and they donated thousands of dollars to our organization. So uh, these are tax deductible gifts. We are registered a nonprofit of 501c3 in the United States. And so we're happy to customize a talk. We've done talks for uh, five minutes, 55 minutes, or five hours, depending on the audience and how much time is needed to feel. And so we add a lot to a presentation, to a missions conference, uh, to a church, to a um, men's group or otherwise. Yeah, and I was part of that men's group, um, Sovereign Men, and um, you had a Christmas in July and then a Christmas in August special where if we all donated, you would, what, double, I think, the uh, donation. So that was incredible. Uh, in terms of this work, can you recall a time where it, it, it just floored you? Like you were just like, I can't believe yeah. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Yeah, we had we had on the last two rescues because we did a rescue of 17 girls, then a rescue of 25 girls in August. And what was so heartbreaking about both of those rescues is about a week before we were financially able to do the rescue. We lost a girl from each group both times. Uh, one was a 14 year old girl. One was a 17 year old girl. And they were trying to escape and they were killed. They were murdered. One was shot in the back of the head and the other one was shot in the chest when she tried to try to run. And um, had she been able to hang on for another week or had we been able to get to her sooner, both of these girls would be alive today. And so we're, we're doing a book compilation with stories from these girls, these girls in their stories in a magazine and a book. And we're telling their stories. 
And um, that that really breaks my heart. There's there's nothing that replaces that. You know, there's there's a scripture in Psalms that says, "When my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up." And um, these kids know that they're being used. These kids know that they've been trafficked. These kids know that they want out and they don't want to be in this hell that they're in. And they don't know what's on the other side. Just like uh, when the U.S. and Canada pulled out of Afghanistan two summers ago, you remember. There was it was a terrible situation in Afghanistan. Many were left behind. The parents were so desperate, David, they were selling their children to traffickers because they said, well, if they stay here, the Taliban's going to rape them every day in front of us. But if we sell them to traffickers, maybe when they go to Pakistan, they will have a little bit better life. And so that was that was curtain number one or curtain number two. Our team on the ground purchased 54 girls and got them into the safe house, got them the medical attention they needed, got them the care that they needed. And these girls are thriving now. And uh, what we do for $400 is we'll rescue a girl uh, for $400 that that provides the rescue and funding them for an entire 12 months. That's their medical, their clothes, their education, their books, their school, and feeding them. They're in a safe family loving environment for 12 months. For $400, we rescue them and feed them and care for them. And so that's the same special we're doing because uh, Beyond Publishing is still making up the difference and tripling a $400 gift. So if anybody wants to donate at 1040impact.org, a $100 gift becomes a $400 gift and a $400 gift becomes a $1,200 gift where we actually can purchase three girls, redeem them from trafficking. They're being sent to the brothels every night and give them a new start in life and educate them and prepare them for a better life. Let them know how much they're loved and they're in a safe family environment with other young women that are growing and thriving. That would be awesome. And and so I asked you what was like one of the worst things you've seen. You shared that. What's one situation you can remember where it's like, yeah, this is this is what it's all about. This is more than the money and the fame. and the Yeah, growth. yeah. Every, t- every time me and my board members go over there, and we've been over multiple times, including even during the pandemic, is every time we go there, it's just to see these kids grow. You know, it's like they're your own kids. You know, I raised four kids and I've got two grandsons. But every time you go and see these kids, to see them singing, to see them learning, to see them in class, to see them socializing and interacting with the other friends and and they're growing up and, you know, we've had three girls age out where they they turn 18 and, and we send them to cosmetology school. That's our partnership now where we fund them to cosmetology school where they uh, can continue on and, you know, have a trade, a skilled trade where they can make a full-time living. Those three girls that have aged out, completed cosmetology school, they have their own apartment, they're rooming together, they're in a safe environment and continuing to thrive and they're paying it forward by uh, 33% that they're giving back to fund the next set of girls that turn 18 that will also go to cosmetology school. So that's really, really rewarding. And then how do they get over the anger and the hurt and the pain? Like what what goes into that? Like, well, well, uh, you know, it, it's really a decision. It's a supernatural thing. It's uh, uh, it's a decision because they can hang on to the bitterness. And I've asked our team on the ground about that, specifically about the girls from Afghanistan being raped by the Taliban. And uh, the way they heal and overcome trauma is they do it one time and they do it pretty efficiently uh, in dealing with that and realizing that's their old life. They don't even think about it anymore. So it's almost like they deal with it. And uh, they they uh, process it, they release it, and then they move on because they don't ask about their parents. They don't think about the old life. They only think about their present and their future. And so it's pretty pretty amazing when you think about it like that. Yeah, no kidding. What's your five-year vision with 1040impact.org? Yeah, we're going to continue to grow over there. We've purchased a property in central Pakistan where we can additionally add more floors onto that. And then we can also expand out. We're out in in the rural areas away from the city. So it's a lot safer out there. So as we continue to grow, we'll continue to acquire property where we can continue doing what we're doing, bringing in more students. Uh, We'll be a five-year plan. We'll be at a thousand students that we're uh, caring for on a full-time basis. And uh, our staff will be, you know, 40 staff and a thousand kids. And um, 
uh, having having grassroots donors all over the world, including corporate sponsors that are that are helping us carry the the torch for a new generation. Uh, that's beautiful. Um, I just want to thank you for this today, um, and then thank our listeners. You've been listening to the deeper dive version of Twenty Six Minutes with a show about leadership and people making an, Im- an impact and making a difference. Michael, um, again, where do our listeners uh, get in touch with you? to work with you. Absolutely. 1040impact.org uh, to help sponsor a child at 1040impact.org. And if they want to uh, talk about publishing a book or having help with us, ghostwrite a book that they can publish a credibility book and get their book distributed globally. It's beyondpublishing.net. So David, it was a pleasure being on this podcast, being on the deeper dive with you and love what you're doing. So keep up the great work. You too, Michael, and I'm I'm looking forward to uh, uh, doing more work with you in the future, my friend. You too. Thanks, David. Thanks, and thank you for listening. We'll be back next week uh, with uh, Gordon Melville. We're going to talk about men's issues, Michael, talking about men's groups. So that's next week. Have a great week, everybody.